Now, can we say the geopolitical game, which is uh, gaining grounds in the 21st century, is uh, one of the reasons why uh, things are not going well in Africa? And if yes, how can we stand as one force towards at, uh, analyzing the problems of the continent and bringing African solutions to African problems? Please, uh, Mr. Paseka, can you unmute your mic? I apologize for that, Clarice. Okay. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, this is a very important question that you're asking because it is solution orientated and it can answer quite a few things so we can theorize a few things on how do we move forward as a continent. Uh, I was thinking while you were asking the question about the specific, uh, the specific uh, example of what China tried to do, where they started to become a source of uh, funding through their roots initiative, where they had said that um, they are going to be able to provide money to countries that need to be helped so that they can develop their countries with less restrictions and with less mendling in politics of that country. And I also thought about what the BRICS bank was meant to be, where it was also said that it would have less uh, policies in place uh, and less rules in place as compared to the IMF and the World Bank when it is going to be assisting uh, previously disadvantaged, and when I say previously, I mean in quotations, previously disadvantaged countries. Uh, because what those two initiatives were meant to do was to help us move away from centering Western, uh, Western basically uh, funding systems, which were always going to fund us, but they would benefit from funding us as a continent. I think the main thing that we should be thinking about is going along the lines of breaks. But what we would need to do, which I believe that uh, Brother Ekana did touch on when he spoke about Gaddafi, what we will need to do is to try and centralize our uh, economic systems in the continent. But what that means is that we would be going deliberately against Western imperial powers. And that is going to be very difficult because we have not had leaders with a backbone who are willing to stand for each other in a very long time. But if if, if we approach this from a solution orientated point of view, we need to streamline, uh, stream, uh, streamline our economic systems whereby there will be interdependence within the continent. We center a similar country which is backed by similar uh, minerals specifically because we are a mineral rich continent. If we were to do that, I can promise you Clarice, we would find ourselves in a position where we would have a backbone, a fi financial economic a backbone where we could be able to negotiate with the rest of the world and we can be able to center specific rules. But that will not happen with the current leadership that we have. And that is why it becomes such a shocker to the system when we find what is happening in Mali, Burkina Faso, and uh, the Niger, and et cetera, where these, uh, these people are actually speaking against the system and they are actually offering solutions for us because we've been taught to think in this specific way. Oh. We are in a state of shock, and that is why we find a country such as Nigeria and the rest of ECOWAS going against these countries, these particular countries, because they are shocked. It's a state of shock because it does not make sense how you can center yourself in a pro-imperialistic world, which has been a pro them for the longest of time and has never centered us as Africans. And then all of a sudden, these new leaders who are coming up, uh, who are militarily based, who say, no, we are going to now center ourselves and our ideals. It, it becomes a shocker to the system. It, 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 our brains cannot comprehend this kind of leadership. And that is why it becomes so difficult for us to be able to agree on an economic streamlined approach uh, where we would center ourselves financially and be able to liberate ourselves from being interdependent uh, from uh, with the rest of the West. With, and we know that the rest, we see with the ICC, that I, just recently America said that they were going to arrest the uh, investors 
investigators for the ICC if they were to come in and arrest people. But the same ICC still has the, uh, uh, the, 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 the backing of the rest of the world when they say that they're going to arrest Putin. You see those contradictions and those ironies. What it means is that who controls who con the, the the people who control um, the world system? What we agree with are the Western countries. All these bodies that are meant to be independent, the IMF, the World Bank, the ICC, and etc. All these bodies are actually dependent on specific countries throughout the world. So that means that these are not people we can be reliant on because these are countries that are controlled by those colonial powers that we have been emphasizing and we have been trying to move away from. So that means that there's no way that you can say that you are going to, to, to be able to move away from financial dependence in those uh, 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 former colonizers, former colonizers, but then you still go and you work with the IMF and the, and the World Bank. It's, it, it's just not possible and it will not be successful. So this is why we need to have leadership which is willing to cooperate and have interdependence within the continent before we can say that we'll successfully go out and navigate the rest of the world because the rest of the world is run by specific people specific countries until this day and that is why they can say that they can push their own agendas to the rest of the of the world and specifically the general south which is uh, significantly poorer in terms of uh, financially poorer as compared to them not mineral poor but uh, human induced poorer if i make sense yeah. i thank you clary I will stay with you, Mr. Paseka, of course. We, ha we have just five minutes to be together, so uh, this should be the last uh, question for the day. Uh, listening to, to what you have said, uh, something came to mind, uh, and I was trying to make us, uh, or I would love us uh, through your insight uh, to understand uh, the, the rhetorics uh, uh, that actually, you know, come with uh, the, the, the financial institutions, you know, the World Bank, uh, the International Monetary Fund, because we're seeing uh, how this is going to affect the, the economy of Uganda. So let's try to understand the, the, the rhetorics that comes or the, 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 that are hidden behind the engagement with these financial institutions and how it actually derails Africa's agenda for growth and development. Well, thank you very much, Clarice, for that, because it's, 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 it's a very important question that you're asking, which goes back to what we said when we started the engagement at, uh, at the earlier stage, where we said that the problem with Africa's development is over-reliant on external factors, because if the, uh, the World Bank decides to cut funding to uh, Uganda, that is going to derail their own development. So that means that Uganda's development is dependent on external powers and external resources. Mm -hmm. And that means that if you go against those external powers and external resources, what is going to happen is that your development is going to be stagnant. You cannot move away from the position that you currently find yourself in or you'd like to move away from. And, and that, that, that makes it very difficult, Clarice, because what that speaks to, it speaks to these ideas that we're speaking to, uh, we're speaking about of what is sovereignty. Sovereignty is the idea that you do not have to account to external powers for you to make specific moves that concern policy, that concern law, and etc. But now, if you cannot implement things because your economy is going to be stagnant, that means that you are, go you are not sovereign, you are not independent of anyone. And it makes it very difficult for you to actually see a way forward as a said to be developing country. It becomes uh, borderline impossible. So how do you, uh, what, what, what is the solution to this? I always emphasize this, and this is not being a idealistic, but the, I, the, 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 the solution is for us to have leadership which centers African people so that we can speak now a move towards directions of a united central currency that the continent of Africa can be reliant on, and then we can move forward. Only that. But as soon as we still continue to look for assistance outside, it doesn't matter whether it's the East or the West. If we still are over-reliant on China, on Russia, on America, and the rest of the world. If we are still like that, that means that we'll not know sovereignty and independence. We will always be reliant on others, and we cannot move forward. Move, we cannot move forward or grow as a people of the continent. I 